and walking a few times a week really help you lose fat and get lean? Or do you have to do a super hardcore cardio workout and really sweat it out in the gym? If I get a chocolate craving, can I just walk off my craving so it'll disappear? Well, there's a lot of different information out there in the internet when it comes to walking and weight loss, and plenty of it being quite controversial, with some saying walking is not very useful for weight loss, while others highlighting the importance of walking for weight loss and maintenance. Hi, I'm Dr. Sabali Powell, professor in bariatric medicine. I conduct clinical trials in nutrition, obesity, and chronic disease. And in my spare time, I help people optimize their weight loss, exercise performance, nutrition, and anti-aging goals. So today I'll present some research studies to help explain whether walking can be a simple and effective tool for you to become a fat burning machine. And to cut through all the debate, I'm going to turn to the science to find the most reliable answers for you. This is part one of a series of videos I will do on walking where I present the evidence on if and how walking can burn fat and help with weight loss and weight maintenance. And stick around to the end and I'll explain whether walking can make your chocolate cravings melt away. Spoiler alert, yes it can, but stay tuned to find out how it works. First, I need to emphasize that you can't simply outwalk, outlift, or outrun a poor diet. If you consume more calories than you burn, you will gain weight. To shed those extra pounds, you must be on a calorie deficit. So how do we achieve this? Well, there are a few approaches. Diet reduction, you can cut back on your calorie intake anywhere up to about 500 calories per day. Or you can increase your activity, meaning you burn more calories by being more active throughout the day. Or a combination of the two, where you mix both of the above approaches to enhance your calorie deficit. However, this is where things get problematic. Many of us tend to overdo it when we wanna lose weight. We either over-restrict our diet too much, leading to massive losses in muscle mass, which then leads to a drop in our metabolic rate. And then of course you gain all the weight back after eating normally again. Hence, the frustrating cycle of weight gain and weight loss. In other words, the famous yo-yo dieting protocol, which we all end up being a victim to. So the key herein is finding a sustainable lifestyle that works for you long-term and one that helps you lose weight and keep it off permanently. So can walking be the answer so the weight loss can be more permanent? And this is where the science comes in. A study published in the Journal of Nutrition found that participants who included walking in their weight loss plan lost an average of 1.8 kilos. That's nearly four pounds in 12 weeks, more than those who didn't walk. This study shows while walking can help you lose weight, it's more effective for weight loss when you combine it with a calorie restricted diet. Well, what about if you aren't on a calorie restricted diet? Can you still lose weight? with walking alone. So if we look at a meta-analysis where they combined the results of nine trials of pedometer-based walking interventions, they found that participants lost an average of about 1.27 kilos or three pounds over 14 weeks, averaging about 10,000 steps a day without changing anything in their diet. This amount of steps equated to an extra 30 minutes on top of their usual movement. So they found that the longer walking trials actually led to more weight loss than the shorter ones. In another 2007 meta-analysis combining 27 randomized controlled trials of walking, they assessed about 1,000 participants with their diets in change. The analysis found that walking more than four times a week, 39 minutes per day for 40 weeks, lost about a kilo, which is about two pounds approximately and about 2% body fat compared to baseline. Interestingly, the people in the control group who didn't add walking to their routine actually gained a few pounds on average over the course of 40 weeks. So walking not only prevented weight gain, but it also caused weight loss. So they were way out in front by three or four pounds. While these studies reinforce the idea that walking is a beneficial activity for weight loss, like everybody says, it's easy to lose weight and harder to keep it off. So the question is, once you do lose the weight, does walking help keep it off long term? And this is what we call weight maintenance phase. Well, one of the best ways to answer is to follow people over time who've lost weight and kept it off over a number of years and find out what strategies they use for their success. Now, time and time again, 
in a number of studies which have followed people who've kept their weight off even up to about 10 years or more, found that walking was a major form of physical activity that played a role in their long-term success, suggesting that walking can be a key to successful weight loss maintenance. Interestingly, a study in the Journal of Diabetes compared free living walking distances in 22 healthy, sedentary, lean, and obese individuals. In other words, the researchers just measured their spontaneous movements during everyday life. They found that generally, sedentary lean subjects walked about 3.5 miles per day more than the obese subjects. So the lean subjects walked twice as much as the obese subjects, even though they were sedentary. The researchers decided to make things a bit more interesting by overfeeding both the lean and obese groups an extra 1,000 kilocalories per day above their weight maintenance need. They did that for about eight weeks to make all the participants gain about four kilos of body weight. When the researchers measured the walking distance after this weight gain, they found that both groups spontaneously decreased their walking distance by about 1.5 miles compared to baseline. The decrease in walking occurred to a similar degree in both the lean and obese groups. So when both groups gain weight, their walking distance spontaneously decreased, meaning weight gain made everybody become more sentry, even more than before. It's all like we were programmed to become obese, isn't it? But it does emphasize that increasing walking distance could be pivotal in preventing weight gain and maintaining weight loss. I also think it highlights that sentry behavior may contribute to the global obesity epidemic. What and how does walking help with weight loss and burn fat? Well, it's all about the intensity of exercise. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, when you exercise, you burn carbs and fat as a fuel source, but the amount of each that you burn is dependent on the intensity of the exercise. Well, let me explain this to you in simple terms so it makes sense. There are two primary energy systems for physical activity. One is the aerobic energy system, which relies on oxygen, and it's used when you're doing moderate intensity exercises like walking, jogging, and cycling. It uses both carbohydrate and fats as fuels. Next, we have the anaerobic energy systems. It doesn't use oxygen and provides rapid energy for short bursts of intense activity like sprinting, running, and weightlifting. It also uses carbs and fats as fuel. So in a nutshell, the lower the intensity of the exercise, the more fat you will burn. Whereas the higher intensity of exercise, more carbs you burn. So to explain this, we're going to use this chart and it's taken from the Institute of Human Anatomy. It basically shows that the lower the intensity of exercise or lower heart rate shown in the red, the higher the fat burning shown in the green column. Conversely, the higher the intensity or the higher the heart rate induced by the exercise, the more carbs are burned shown in yellow. And this is because different energy sources are used in these types of exercise, as I explained before. Now, if you look at the heart rate on the left-hand side, you see that at a heart rate of 70 and you can just measure this on your smartwatch you're burning 1.4 calories per minute and it's mostly coming from fat and very little coming from carbs this is what would happen if you took a gentle stroll and if you think this is good if you pick up the pace a bit and with your heart rate going up to about 127 to 138 you're burning even more calories which are shown in pink and even more of these are coming from fats. So this is what we call the sweet spot in zone two cardio. And this is your best fat burning zone because your body is relying on the use of fat for your energy source. So if you don't have a smartwatch to measure this, you can gauge this by the talk test. And what I mean by this is if you can walk and still carry out a conversation, this is a good indicator that you're in zone two cardio. With higher levels of intensity like running and sprinting, start moving out of the fat burning zone at 144 to 153 beats per minute. And you can gauge this by figuring out if you're starting to huff and puff. And at this level of exercise, it's actually very difficult to finish a sentence, let alone carry out a conversation. So the total calories being burned by your body in this situation are mostly coming from carbohydrate stores because it's a quick source of energy. And if you look here, you may not be burning as much fat, but the amount of calories you burn does go up at a very high intensity. So in 30 minutes of running, you would burn more calories than 30 minutes of walking. But this just means you just have to walk longer to get the same amount of calories burned. And even though you cannot out-exercise a bad diet, 
Once you have your nutrition dialed in, walking can literally turn you into a fat burning machine. Well, how much walking should you be doing for significant weight loss and maintenance? Well, if your main goal is to lose fat, then you also want to focus on both the calories burned and the amount of fat burned. On average, you can burn anywhere from around 100 to 300 calories per 30 minutes of brisk walking, which is equivalent to about 3,500 steps on a smartwatch. And if you want to maximize fat loss, you can try to walk for at least 30 to 60 minutes a day, five days a week. But initially, if you're not used to walking, then you can just train yourself to walk daily. I actually recommend starting with about 10,000 steps a day, and then you can work your way up to about 12,000 to 15,000. And having a smartwatch makes it easier to track this. And if you go even higher, the fat will just melt off because this amount of activity can add up to significant weight loss over time, as long as you have your nutrition optimized. However, word of warning, whatever you do, it's important to find a sustainable level of physical activity that you can do for a long period of time. Studies have shown that a moderate walking dose has a better exercise adherence compared with a higher dose of walking. So more isn't always better if you're not going to stick to it. Remember, consistency and gradual progression in walking intensity and duration are the key factors in achieving this as a lifelong habit that will help you lose weight or sustain your weight loss. Now, there may be many reasons why walking can be so beneficial for weight loss and maintenance other than its fat burning potential. Studies suggest that a quick walk might be a helpful strategy to manage food cravings effectively. A study from the University of Exeter shown that 15 minute bouts of a moderate intensity exercise, or in other words, brisk walking, reduced levels of sugary snack cravings. It also decreased cravings and the urges to eat chocolate associated with stress-induced situations, even if food cues were presented to the overweight and obese people. As you can see from this graph, the line in blue shows that there was much lower cravings for chocolate and sugary snacks when subjects went for a walk, even when stressful situations were presented or a food cue was introduced, which is amazing. So a quick 15 minute walk can curb cravings for chocolate, even in a stressful situation. You're probably thinking, how would just simple plain old walking help with my chocolate or biscuit craving? It's probably because walking has been shown to decrease our hunger hormones such as ghrelin, which then helps to reduce our overall food cravings. Many studies have also shown that walking can reduce stress levels, which in turn decreases the likelihood of emotional eating and cravings. Stress is often associated with increased food cravings, particularly for high calorie comfort foods. As I mentioned before in the previous study, even when stress was introduced to the overweight and obese individuals, they did not eat the chocolate. Walking can also serve as a distraction from food cravings. By focusing on the activity, individuals may find that their immediate craving for specific specific food diminishes. So if you find yourself dreaming about chocolate cake, then it may be helpful to go see the sunset or go for a walk with your dog. Walking also releases endorphins, the feel-good chemicals, which can improve your mood and potentially reduce the desire to eat for emotional reasons. So the next time you're feeling a bit down, going for a walk may make you feel good enough to keep you away from the bag of chips. Collectively, the benefits of walking go beyond its ability to burn fat and calories through its physiological effects. It can also help manage food cravings, which is particularly important when you're trying to lose weight and keep it off long term. I think it can be a very powerful tool in your weight management arsenal. However, it's important to note that your experiences when it comes to food cravings may vary due to diet, hydration levels, sleep, and overall lifestyle, which play a significant role in managing food cravings. So I think it's a good idea to test this out for yourself next time you have an urge to eat something sugary. I don't know about you, I just can't run anymore like I used to in my 20s and 30s. And given that I used to be overweight, fat burning is always a priority for me. So walking has been a sustainable form of exercise that helps me burn a moderate amount of calories. While I do love a good pump class at the gym, plain old simple walking combined with a balanced diet, hydration and rest has been very helpful for my long-term weight loss journey and has allowed me to be able to maintain my lean physique all year round. It doesn't seem to increase my hunger like other high intensity exercises, and it doesn't deplete my ability to recover from a hard gym session. 
hopefully it can help you as well with your health journey. So come back to next week's video where I will go into whether the time of the day that you walk matters in how much fat you burn, how you can get more fat burning out of the same amount of walking, and we'll explore if you can actually grow muscles with walking. And I'll also address whether you can actually target fat loss in specific areas like the abs through walking. You might be surprised by what I found. And to really get the most out of your weight loss journey, watch my previous video on how much protein you actually need to eat. This is Dr. Sabali Pal. See you next week.